I'm Andy Fisher, WNEW News. At eight minutes past ten, time for the Sears Radio Theater. That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a story of the West with Lorne Green as your host. Here's a preview. Then you pass an abandoned house, you'll be halfway. Why, what's the matter? Uh, you ain't heard, huh? Some kind of wild animal prowling these parts. Folks in the settlement think it's a panther. And from the looks of its tracks, they say it's plenty big. A panther? The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. Hello, I'm Stan Martin. It's sad that many youngsters feel the only way they can make their mark on our town is with a destructive act or a smear of graffiti. One building on New York's Lower East Side stands apart from the others. Its walls are spotless inside and out. The youngsters who work and play there have earned the respect of the entire city, just as they've learned to respect themselves. I'm talking about the Boys Brotherhood Republic. The BBR has been helping underprivileged boys work their way out of the slums for almost 50 years. By giving them the responsibility of governing and policing themselves, the BBR helps create a set of values which guide its members all their lives. I know because I was a member from the time I was six, and the BBR helped change my life. It's doing the same right now for hundreds of youngsters with no other place to turn but the streets. Help the BBR turn out solid citizens. Please send whatever financial support you can to the Boys Brotherhood Republic, 888 East 6th Street, New York, 10009. Thank you. That was so good, dear. I'm so full I can hardly move. What was that dessert? Bananas Foster. Mom, where's your dental floss? It's in the medicine cabinet in the bathroom. Oh, yeah, here it is. Look at all that medicine. Mom, are you still remembering to take your high blood pressure medicine? No, not very often, dear. I've been feeling great lately, so I'm saving my medicine for when I feel bad. Mom, high blood pressure has no symptoms, but it's very serious. You might be risking a stroke. You know, the American Heart Association says you're supposed to take your medicine every day. I think you should see Dr. Mitchell tomorrow morning. High blood pressure is a silent killer. It has no symptoms. The American Heart Association wants you to have your blood pressure checked. And if it's high, to follow your doctor's instructions to the letter. The American Heart Association is fighting for your life. This is Lorne Green. Yep. Whenever we think of the taming of the West, Certain familiar images come to mind. Bad guys on black horses and good guys on white ones. Dance halls and gunfights. Covered wagons moving in elephantine fashion across the trackless plains. And Indian attacks. But the adventures undergone by those early settlers as they wrested their first crops from the rich earth were more varied than that. And the dangers they faced were not always the kind that could be vanquished by the 11th hour arrival of the 7th Cavalry. Horst Bowder and his family were like tens of thousands of other pioneers who found themselves living on the very cutting edge of civilization. In times of trouble, self-reliance was the key. But even so, so unadorned were their lives that the smallest mishap could have unexpected consequences. Like the time Horst's plow broke and he sent his oldest daughter, Henya, to the nearest settlement 15 miles away to have it repaired. It seemed at the time no more than a frustrating inconvenience. But what they didn't know was that a deadly danger lurked in the forest along the way. And that's only the beginning of our story. Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week, brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, The Panther, by Percy Granger. Our stars, Joan McCall and Stephen Markle. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops. 
for value. When I need advice, I go to my mom. Why not? It's free. Now that I'm married and moving into a new house, I want all the advice I can get. So when mom says shop Sears, I listen. You should. Sears is a great help on those big items you'll need for your new home. Major appliances like washers, dryers, and refrigerators. They'll deliver, install, and service. I always depend on Sears. You should, too. Sears, 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 where America shops. Sears National Automotive Values. Now get the Sears Heavy Duty Shock just $9.99 each installed. Smooth out some of the jolts, jars, and jerks with America's best-selling shock. And get the weather handler, Sears all-weather steel belted radial tire. As low as $29.88 plus a $1.76 federal excise tax on size P165 ADR13. Save 10%. This is the minimum national savings. Regular prices vary in some markets. Super values at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Stop at Sears. It's that time of year, America. Sears National Home Appliance Sale is on. Celebrate great savings on many Sears major home appliances. Save from $20 to $100 on selected Kenmore washers and dryers, refrigerators, dishwashers, color TVs, microwave ovens, vacuums, and more. So save big and hurry to Sears National Home Appliance Sale now. Sale ends July 28th. Dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Kenmore, solid as Sears. At most larger Sears retail stores. It is said that idealism must always prevail on the frontier because the hard life offers little hope to those who see things only as they are. The Bowder family was nothing if not idealistic. They had left behind a small, overworked farm in Germany to settle in the wilderness of southern Wisconsin. What follows is a true story. An alternate telling over to someone who, as a small child, heard it many times. I've lived in this part of the country all my life, and I've heard a lot of stories about the early days. Indian troubles, prairie fires that spread faster than a man could run, crude grave markings discovered in the middle of nowhere, the tragedies behind them lost forever. But the most hair-raising story of all concerned a 17-year-old girl named Henya Bowder. The Bowder farm was in a remote valley about 15 miles from the nearest settlement, and Horst Bowder looked forward to the day when his two small boys would be old enough to help him till the soil. Henya looked forward to that day, too, for until then she felt an obligation to stay on the farm and help, while increasingly her thoughts turned on a certain young boy back in the settlement. But love is not the theme of my story, although it may be one of its causes. Hang up! Here I am, Father. I was just taking the cows out to pasture. Why are you back from the field so early? Is it already time for breakfast? No, the blade on the plow is broken again. Did that young man of yours fix it bad on purpose? Oof never touched it, Papa. Mr. Lindstrom repaired it himself. Oof was working the bellows, I watched. Well, you have to take it back. Yes, Papa. <laughs> and you tell Mr. Lindstrom I won't pay him another penny. The work wasn't done properly the first time. Yes, Papa. I'll, I'll go change my dress. This time, young lady, you let Ulf work the bellows in peace. I don't think he even notices me. Well, I don't want you hanging about. You go visit your Aunt Katya while the work is being done. Oh, Papa, she just talks. Talk is not such a bad thing if you listen to it. Now go on, hurry up and get ready. I want you to be back before nightfall. <laughs> Did you make for her a lunch? Yes. There's some bread and cheese and a bit of ham. Better fill a jug with water from our well and put that in the bag, too. I can draw water from the well at old Nielsen's house. Well, you know you mustn't drink that water. Why not? What? It, it's not helpful. Oh, Mama. It doesn't quench the thirst. Uh, there are the boys. They're getting dressed upstairs. I told them they'd have to watch the cows today. You think you can be home before nightfall? Yes, if Mr. Lindstrom can mend the blade right away. I don't want you traveling after dark. Now, Papa, don't worry. What can possibly happen? There, I'm through with my breakfast and all set to go. Any more? 
<laughs> We're going on a trip. Uh, hey, here, here's your water. Give me your foot. I help you up. Oh, Papa, I'm not a little girl anymore. <laughs> I'll be back in time for supper. But don't race. And remember, tell Mr. Lindstrom not a cent. Yes, Papa. And this time, don't stand where Ulf can see you. Hendo was a spirited young girl who loved just about everything the hard life they led in those days had to offer. And this might be the appropriate place to mention that she was not at all bad looking. A long braid of soft brown hair, an apple in each cheek, a pair of sparkling eyes, and a merry laugh had every young man in the neighborhood looking over his shoulder in her direction. If she favored Ulf Lindstrom, the blacksmith's boy, over the rest, it was because she mistook his shyness for indifference, and that piqued her vanity. Hanya's horse was a sturdy young stallion who took his spirited disposition from his mistress. She had named him Fenimore, because when they first arrived in this country, she had acquired a complete set of the works of James Fenimore Cooper, which she read to teach herself English. <laughs> What's the matter, Fenimore? Are you getting nervous because we're approaching the old Nielsen house? <laughs> Don't be such a ninny. It's not really haunted. We only thought that as children. Come on. I'm more interested in how to get Wolf to ask me to the dance this Saturday than a silly old haunted house. <laughs> there it is. Don't be nervous. It's just a shudder. We'll soon be past it. It does look spooky, even in the daylight. But just think, it means we are halfway there. The road from the Bowder farm to the settlement wound through a deep forest, in the middle of which, in a small clearing, stood an old abandoned two-story house. The children of the community imagined it to be haunted by the ghost of its former owner, Lars Nielsen. People even claimed to have seen a light burning in the garret on chill autumn evenings. But it was not the house that made Fenimore nervous. His instincts told him a far more real danger was lurking nearby. A danger which, before the day was over, would become a part of Henya's life forever. Here are more super values from Sears. We saw $100 off the price of our Craftsman 10-inch table and radial saws. Now only $279.95 each. And they saw cross cuts, bevels, and more. Sears Best Table Saw includes leg set, two extensions, and one horsepower motor. The radial saw has a one and a half horsepower motor and a single lever miter arm control. Hurry! Your choice, Sears 10-inch table or radial saw. Only $279.95 till July 21st. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. It's another super value from Sears. The great summer savings go round clearance in women's fashions. Save 25 to 40 percent on looks that add savvy to summer. Give cool, colorful dresses a whirl. Be in the summer swing in shorts and tops from the budget shop. Find much more in our junior bazaar and Mrs. Sportswear departments too. The great summer savings go round. A super clearance while limited quantities last. Sears, where America shops for value. Light up your life and home during Sears National Home Lighting Sale. Rack up savings like $50 on a crystal glass chandelier, $10 on a country kitchen fixture, save $3 on utility room lights, and more. Sears has light fixtures on sale for your living room, bedroom, rec room, and hallways, too. The savings are hot, but they stop July 21st, so score now. Sears National Home Lighting Sale. Let it make your life and home a whole lot brighter. Dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. On a clear autumn day, a young girl makes her way through a dark forest on a primitive road that twists its narrow way beneath the lowering branches of ancient spruce and pine. More than a hundred years later, a man is remembering her story. Once past the old haunted house, Henya was so relieved that she forgot her mother's warning to conserve her horse's energy for the long trip and gave him free rein. No, Fenimore! Fly! She had never felt him run so fast. 
did not occur to her to wonder why, but just ahead was an old peddler approaching from the other direction, keeping a wary eye on the dense forest around him. A shotgun rested by his side. Henya was about to learn what her horse already knew. What's that? Whoa, Sam! The old peddler picked up his shotgun and waited at the ready until Henya came into view. <laughs> it's all right, Sam. It's just a young girl. Hello. You all by yourself? Yes. What are you galloping for? Just a gallop. I'm in no hurry. You didn't see something up the road, did you? No. How much farther is it through this forest? When you pass an abandoned house, you'll be halfway. Why, what's the matter? Uh, you ain't heard, huh? Some kind of wild animal prowling these parts. Folks in the settlement think it's a panther. And from the looks of its tracks, they say it's plenty big. A panther? Is he here in the forest? Yeah, they don't know where he is for sure, but he's attacked a couple of the farms, killed some livestock. You got a gun on you? No. Oh, I wouldn't be traveling this road without one. Tell you that, even in daylight like it is now. I advise you to keep that horse of yours at a gallop until you're clear of these woods. Me, I'm getting on. Yep. A panther? Henya Bowder was not a girl who was easily frightened. At least, not so long as the sun was shining and the birds were singing. But she did keep a brisk pace until she was clear of the forest and the settlement was in sight. And she did her best to keep her mind on Ulf, the blacksmith's boy, and how she could get him to take her to the dance. Pump the bellows faster if I need the fire hotter. That's better. Now go outside and fetch the iron for the barrel hoops. Hello, Ulf. Oh. Hello. I... I had to bring our plow blade back. It broke again. Oh, I get farther. You, you see right here? It broke uh, where you mended it. Uh, well, maybe he dug it too deep in the ground. Maybe, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, see, it broke right where it was mended. I know. We can fix it again. Have you heard about the panther? We got a good fire going. I met a peddler. Uh, he said there's a panther in the area. Ah, oh, I've heard about it. I saw the ox he killed. They say he must be fully grown to have done such a thing. People aren't going anywhere alone now or traveling after dark. Are you going to the dance on Saturday? What? The dance. Are you going to come? Oh, I, I don't know. Father doesn't like dancing much. Well, you don't have to dance with him. I know. Boy, what's keeping you? Oh, oh, hello, Henry. Hello. Uh, Ulf, get that iron inside before we lose the heat. Yes, sir. Good day, Ulf. Uh, we'll probably have rain. Yeah, Henry? Oh, uh, our plow blade broke again. Papa says it wasn't fixed properly. Maybe hit a stone, you know. He asked you to fix it right away so I can be home before dark. I can have it mended in an hour. He... He says he doesn't want to pay you again. Mm, it will be ready in an hour. Thank you. I'll be at my aunt's house. Ulf will bring it to you. <laughs> Henya's Aunt Katya was a first-rate talker. She could sniff gossip at a hundred paces. She was delighted by her niece's unexpected visit, but also apprehensive, and she tried to dissuade Henya from returning to the farm that evening. Uh, you have heard about that animal, haven't you? That panther they say is stalking the neighborhood. Has anyone seen him? No. But he has killed two of Mr. Henson's cows. And he killed an ox, a big bull ox owned by Knut Larsen. You know, I have heard they're not going to hold a dance. What? Well, of course not. It is too dangerous. But I was looking forward to it. It would be foolish with a mad beast on the loose. Mad beast. Well, I'm not afraid of him. And I'm going home tonight like I promised father. Oh, very well. But you will wait for your Uncle Herman. Why? He will go with you. Oh, uh... Um... No. That is my last word on the subject. I will make him go with you. He can stay at your farm for the night and come back in the morning. Ulf 
wolf arrived within the hour as promised with the mended blade, but under Katya's inquisitive eye he was even shyer than usual and left quickly without a word. And then, while precious minutes of daylight passed, Henya was forced to sit and wait. Sears Radio Theater will continue after this message from your local station. Mystery by the Masters. Edgar Allan Poe, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, Robert Louis Stevenson, Guy de Maupassant. You'll hear radio dramatizations of their most popular works on our CBS Radio Mystery Theater weekend classics. I'm E.G. Martel, your host for Mystery seven times a week on most of these stations with original radio plays Monday through Friday. And on the weekends, we bring you the classics, modern adaptations of the world's greatest stories of mystery, adventure, suspense, and even humor from the pen of Mark Twain. If you've read them before and want to enjoy them again, or if they're new to you now, listen here and enjoy our radio dramatizations of the world's great literature every Saturday and Sunday on CBS Radio Mystery Theater. And of course, listen in Monday through Friday, too, for original tales of the macabre over most of these CBS Radio Network stations. I'm Henry Winkler, and I'm an actor, and I'm proud of it. I've played many roles from Shakespeare to the Fonz, and right now I'm playing what I consider a significant spokesman role for the American Cancer Society. We're inviting you to join our cast of millions, the millions of Americans who are playing a role in the fight against cancer, scientists in research laboratories, the people helping cancer patients with rehabilitation and other services, many of them former cancer patients themselves. All those volunteers playing an important role, ringing doorbells, to help raise the funds needed to bring about a happy ending to our centuries-old drama, The War Against Cancer. That's your role. Act. Send a generous check now to your American Cancer Society. It's not a small part. As Shakespeare said, many strokes, though with a little axe, felled the hardest timbered oak. Remember, it's your American Cancer Society. To come suddenly on an unexpected danger is one thing. We react from instinct without time for thought. But to be forced to sit and wait, knowing a possible danger lurks before us, this is torture indeed. And it is just such a torture which is testing the nerves of our young heroine. Henya's uncle Herman was a doctor, the only doctor in the settlement. Indeed, for many miles around, so the hour of his return could not be predicted. He had left early that morning to make the rounds of the outlying farms to the east, where an outbreak of scarlet fever was threatening to turn into an epidemic. Finally, the two women heard his footfall, but the afternoon shadows were already beginning to lengthen. Furthermore, he had a distressing announcement. Yes, but I cannot take Henya all the way back to her farm. I cannot spend the night so far away. Beta Peterson is about to deliver her baby. There have been complications. I, I must be there. Well, we cannot let the child go home alone. I'm not a child, Aunt, and I will be perfectly all right. Even if we did meet up with this animal, Fenimore is strong. You could outrun him. I'm not so sure of that. Why don't you spend the night with us? Papa expects me. If I don't come home, he'll be worried. What if he would have to look for me? He doesn't know about the panther. He wouldn't be on his guard. That, that's true, but it's really impossible for me to go with you. Perhaps this beast. Perhaps it's not a panther at all. What else would it be? In the old country, there were spirits, trolls, sometimes the very devil himself. At night, they would do terrible things. Oh, Aunt, stop. No one has seen it. What animal is strong enough to kill oxen? No one can outrun the devil. And no horse either. Aunt, we left the trolls behind when we crossed the ocean. I have seen these things with my own eyes. Well, Fenimore doesn't know anything about devils, and he's not the least bit superstitious, <laughs> and neither am I. And the next thing you know, your aunt will be making you a magic talisman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but let me suggest a more practical solution. Yeah, I want you to take this. That's a pistol. 
Yes, yes. But you must be very careful with it. But I've never fired a gun before. Well, you will take this one now. I, I insist on it. I'm sure I wouldn't be able to hit him. It doesn't matter if you can hit him or not. The sound of the gun will be enough to scare him away. Now take it. Mm, okay. <laughs> Hermann, at least ride with her to the edge of the forest. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That much I can do. <laughs> Your heart is quite the one for superstitions, isn't she? <laughs> it's all silly. Trolls and devils. <laughs> and I think maybe she, she misses the whole country. I mean, it's her way of saying that she's homesick. Mm -hmm. It's going to be quite cool this evening. Yeah? Will you be warm enough? Yes. I can give you my coat if you promise to return it. I have a shawl in my saddlebag. You are sure? Yes. Well, it is late. The sun will be down in another hour. Then there's only the dusk. We are almost to the forest. Look for an outline it makes against the sky. It will be dark as a pocket in there. Oh, Uncle, stop teasing me. Whoa. Well, here I must leave you, I'm afraid. You have the pistol. It's in the saddlebag. Thank you for bringing me this far, Uncle. But don't worry. Fenimore will get me home safely. Well, goodbye. Good night. Ach, that sunset. Look at it. If I could describe that, I would be a millionaire. <laughs> And so, Henya entered the wood, alone. Her uncle watched her until she was out of sight, and then turned back. Uncle was right, Fenimore. It is much darker in here. But we can still see well enough, can't we? Fenimore, they won't stop to dance because of some old wild animal, will they? I wish Wolf had said he was going. It would be nice to have something to look forward to. What was that? Oh, just an old owl. <laughs> but it's not even dark yet. Oh, Fenimore, that was just a chipmunk. Anyone would think you were as superstitious as Aunt Katya. Still, we should go faster. There aren't so many birds singing now, are there? Of course it's nearly night. They've gone to sleep. They're not afraid. <sighs> There's the Pigeon River. That means we're almost to the old Nilsson house. And that's halfway. Do you think it really is haunted? I've never come by it so close to night before. Maybe there will be a light shining from the garret window the way Uncle Herman always said. <laughs> And the ghost of old Mr. Nilsson will invite us in for tea and biscuits, and we will never be seen or heard from again. Oh, I wish he hadn't told us such stories. I wonder what Mama has made us for supper. Everything is so quiet, Fenimore. I can hear your hoofbeats and your breathing <laughs> and my heart beating. I heard a bobolink a moment ago, and a robin. They say the robin sings before rain, but the skies are clear. And that's a pheasant. I bet there's not a sound in the woods I can't identify. Wind. Did you know there's a different kind of wind for every tree, Fenimore? In the poplars it rustles, and in the tamarack it sighs. But in the white pines, it whispers. Shh. What was that? Did you hear it anymore? It was like a baby. I've never heard such... Do you think there's a child lost in the woods? That would be terrible. It's in terrible danger. We've got to find it. Come on, quickly. It sounded like it came from the left. 
Look, there's a deer run that goes off in that direction. He must be down there. Hello? Hello? Keep going, Fenimore. What's the matter? <laughs> Fenimore, we've got to help that person. What if the panther should find them? Oh, no. Fenimore, that's not a child. No person can make a sound like that. We've got to get back on the road. Turn around, turn around. Be very quiet. Maybe he won't hear us. Let's go. There's the road. We're almost there. Oh, he's following us. He's heard us. Run, Fenimore, run. Go. Go as fast as you can. Oh, you're tired. I can feel you're tired. Oh, why didn't I listen to Mama? Why did I run you so much this morning? The plow blade is too much bait. I'll get rid of it. There. Now you can go faster, Fenimore. Don't stumble. You'll never make it. He must be right behind us now. It's too far. Nilsson's house. If only we can get there. Oh, I wish there would be a light in the window. If we can get there, I'll take Uncle's pistol and barricade myself behind the door. We can run for home and get Papa. There's the house. We should be there by now. I think he's getting closer. Please, Fenimore, please, go faster. <laughs> Kenya lashed her horse with all her might. Her only hope was to reach the abandoned house ahead of their pursuer. But in the fading twilight, the distance between them was growing shorter. Generations ago, families dined by the warmth of the open hearth. Today, Sears rekindles this spirit with its open hearth dining room furniture. Faithfully rendered early American designs and careful workmanship give it an heirloom quality. The satin glow and warm highlighting of Sears open hearth take 26 steps to achieve. There's no shorter method to bring out the beauty of the wood. And like all good furniture, open hearth is made to last for a long time with sturdy tongue and groove and mortise and tenon construction. Choose from 16 different pieces of open hearth at most Sears retail stores. Why not ruffle up a window with tradition from Sears open hearth collection? Collection. Our inheritance Cape Cod curtains have plenty of big, fluffy ruffles for that traditional New England look that's become an American favorite. They're an easy care permapressed fabric made from 65% Codell polyester and 35% cotton, completely machine washable. Choose from 14 distinctive colors, one of the largest selections to be found anywhere. So carry on a decorating tradition, the Cape Cod look from Sears, available at most larger Sears retail stores. The room held several Sears brass plated lamps. One switched on. The finely pleated antique satin shade illuminated the furniture softly. Another lamp turned on, and another. The patio doors blew open. The clean brass-plated lamp nearby, with its heavy base built for stability, did not budge. The room glowed in the brassy elegance that these Sears best lamps command. Create your own hauntingly elegant moods with Sears brass-plated lamps at most larger Sears retail stores. again, and here's the concluding act of The Panther. Henya flew along the desolate forest road. Her horse was breathing heavily and beginning to foam at the mouth. Her home was still several miles distant, much too far for both of them to make it. But if she could get to the abandoned house that sat by the road in a clearing just ahead, she might be able to keep the animal at bay with the pistol her uncle had given her while Fenimore raced for home and help. Don't slow down, Fenimore. We must be there soon by now. There. There, I see it. There it is. Thank God. Oh, oh boy. Now, you run for home. You hear me? Keep going. Go back to the farm and warn Papa. Bring him back here. Oh, wait now. Let me get the pistol out of the saddlebag. Fenimore, wait! Wait, the pistol! Oh, oh, 
Oh, no time. Quickly, Henya, get into the house. It's stuck. Please, please open. Now shut it. The latch is broken. It will never stay. I must find something to block it. There's a table. Oh, it's not heavy enough. Uh, I need something more. I remember, in the kitchen, there's a stove. I hope it's still there. Yes, here it is. Uh, uh, please, uh, please move. These chairs, I can use them. Oh, things so all oh, still fall to pieces if he tries to get in. There's old logs in the fireplace. Oh, they're rotten, like sawdust. Maybe the stones in the chimney are loose. No. Could I crawl up the chimney? Maybe he couldn't get me there. Oh, it's too small. I can't. Ow! Oh. I'm making too much noise. Be quiet. Maybe he won't know I'm here. Maybe he'll fall off anymore. I can see the clearing through this crack. Maybe, but it's getting so dark. Please, Fenimore, please make it. The shadows were lengthening around the old house. Kenya peered out into the woods around her, but already it was so dark it was all but impossible to make out any signs of movement in the underbrush. For what seemed like a very long moment, there was silence. The wind was dying down. And one by one, the birds had stopped their singing. Don't breathe so loudly. He will hear you. Oh, I don't see him. Maybe he gave up. I can't hear anything. Only the wind. He's not there. He wasn't behind us. Maybe we lost him. Or maybe I was imagining things. <laughs> I let all those stories scare me. And now Fenimore's gone. And I have to stay in this spooky old house until Papa comes. Oh, Henya, you are so silly. You act like you're still a child. I hope Ulf doesn't hear about this. He'll think I'm an idiot. I mustn't let anyone know. I must make Papa swear not to tell anyone. Oh! oh. Now stop it. Now you're just trying to frighten yourself. There's nothing wrong with this house. It isn't haunted. And Mr. Nelson's ghost isn't living in the garret. There's no one up there. Go on. Go on and take a look. Be a brave girl for a change. What was that? Mr. Nielsen? Someone? Is someone there? Look. Look there at the edge of the clearing. There's something moving. It's just the branches of the tree, isn't it? No. I can see a light. Two lights. But so small, so close together. What are they? And then she realized what she was looking at. 
the last rays of daylight reflected in the eyes of an enormous black animal. He was all but invisible in the shadows beneath the trees. Only the two pinpoints of light were visible, and they gazed directly at the house. Maybe if the wind blows, he won't pick up my scent. He'll go back to the woods. But there's no more wind. Why does he keep looking here? He's moving. He's coming this way. Henya braced herself against the flimsy barricade she had thrown up against the door. As the animal walked into the clearing towards the house, she closed her eyes, afraid to look. Again, the panther threw himself against the door, and each time the old wood gave more on its rusty hinges. Henya realized it was hopeless. Upstairs. I have to go upstairs. I don't know if they'll hold me. The wood's rotten. Quickly. Please don't fall in. I must... I put something against, across the stairs. There's nothing. I can't move. And you lay exhausted at the top of the stairs, too frightened to move. Looking down, for the first time, she had a clear look at the animal that was stalking her. He paused for a moment to catch his breath. And then moved slowly to the foot of the stairs. He looked up. Henya picked up a piece of old dowel to use as a club, but the panther did not advance further. He seemed to sense that the rickety old stairs might not hold him. Instead, he turned and moved into the other rooms as if looking for another way up the stairs. For several minutes, he was out of sight. Henya listened to his footsteps, trying to judge where he might be. Then he came back to the foot of the stairs. He's crouching... He's going to leap. There was only one place left for Henya to go. The garret. The infamous haunted garret where old Mr. Nilsson was rumored to sit with a lighted candle. As children, none of them had ever dared to go up there. And even the adults had misgivings. But there was no thought of that now. As the panther was about to leap, Henya hurled the dowel at him. It struck him in the face. Henya ran to the garret steps and threw herself against the trap door that led to the attic. It's stuck! Open! Please! He's coming up! The animal, maddened by the blow of the wood, took the first set of stairs in a single leap just as Henya forced open the attic door. As the panther went sprawling at her feet, she scrambled up into the attic and slammed the trap door in his face. He'll try to force this door next. And even if I sit on it, my fate won't be enough. She glanced quickly about. In the gloom, she spied an old trunk. She seized on it and dragged it over the door. The panther, meanwhile, had recovered and now crouched at the foot of the half-dozen steps that led to the attic. He leaped up, hurling his weight against the trap door. Henya <coughs> climbed on top of the trunk to add weight to the door. She lay across it and held on as the panther leapt again. The hinges were beginning to give. Each leap was stronger than the one before. It seemed as if the next lunge would do it. The trunk was half off the door and Henya had no more strength to move. There was a momentary silence. The panther sensed the moment was at hand. He gathered his strength for the final leap. And as he crouched... Henya! Henya! Father? Henya, are you up there? 
Are you all right? Papa. Oh, Papa. Oh. It's all right. He's dead. You are safe. <laughs> Today the forest is no longer there. The winding road along which Henia Bowder raced for her life was eventually straightened, then graded, then paved. The trees on either side were cut down and the land plowed under. Nielsen's house disappeared. Today the road is an interstate highway. The spot where the house stood is in the middle of a clover leaf. I take that exit on my way home from work. And sometimes as I drive down the curving ramp in the late afternoon, I look to my right at a point in midair about 20 feet above the grassy knoll where 130 years ago, my great-great-grandmother lay across an old trunk and prayed for her life. It's that time of year, America. Sears National Home Appliance Sale is on. Celebrate great savings on many Sears major home appliances. Save from $20 to $100 on selected Kenmore washers and dryers, refrigerators, dishwashers, color TVs, microwave ovens, vacuums, and more. So save big and hurry to Sears National Home Appliance Sale now. Sale ends July 28th. Dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Kenmore, solid as Sears. Here they come. More values from Sears, like $1.44 pull-on shorts and $1.99 tank tops for women. They're colorful polyester tank tops that slip on neatly over the double-knit nylon shorts. Shorts with elastic waist and stitch front creases. Just watch them go. Sears $1.44 shorts and $1.99 tank tops for women. All set for action. Hurry in while quantities last. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. You must pay. The house. But I can't. The money, the work. Paint or else. Oh, someone help. Never fear. Sears House Paint Sale is here. You'll save $3 on each gallon of Sears paint. Just $6.99 for interior flat and ceiling paint. Only $7.99 for exterior flat and interior semi-gloss paint. And it's one coat only paint when used as directed. I'm saved. Curse it. Sears Paint Sale ends July 21st. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. The Panther was written by Percy Granger. Produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. Your host was Lorne Green. Our stars were Joan McCall and Stephen Markle. Featured in the cast were Marvin Miller, Joan Tompkins, Harold Dyronforth, Hans Conried, and Robert Towers. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. Look, there's a couple of Salvation Army guys over there. You know, the Salvation Army operates these uh, core community centers all over the country where everyone from kids to senior citizens can make new friends and... Hey, wait a second. How do you know all this about the Salvation Army? Well, I spoke with one of their officers the other day, and I asked him what the Salvation Army did. Come on. They pick up old clothes and furniture. Right. But what you don't know is they operate daycare centers, senior citizen homes, summer camps, and disaster relief services for areas that are stricken with tornadoes, floods... Wow, out. the Salvation Army's into all that? I had no idea. That's right. And the Salvation Army has been in America for nearly 100 years. No kidding. 1980 is the 100th anniversary of the Salvation Army in the United States. Wow, that's some tradition. If you need help with a problem or can help, Call your local Salvation Army today. New York, 
Chicago, St. Louis, Miami, Seattle. Our biggest cities are sending out cries for more VISTA volunteers. VISTA means volunteers in service to America. VISTA volunteers work with groups of inner city residents to tackle the many urban problems that can't be solved alone. By working together with local leaders, entire neighborhoods can be restored. Job training centers can be created. Educational programs, health and legal services can be expanded to reach all who need them. VISTA means working through the democratic process to better our cities. Community people are learning that they can have a voice in making the decisions that affect their lives. VISTA volunteers come from all backgrounds. Many come from the neighborhoods they work in. They all share one conviction, that self-reliant, self-confident, caring individuals can make a difference in a community. America needs more VISTA volunteers. Put yourself where you're needed. Call 800-424-8580 or write VISTA, Washington, D.C., 20525. A public service of this station and action. Tomorrow's Sears Radio Theater will be a comedy with Andy Griffith as your host. Let's listen. Well, the children are looking forward to seeing you. Do they know? Are they upset? Mm, yes and no. Well, what was Jeff's reaction? He said again and kept eating his cereal. Just like his father. And Carrie? She wanted to know if you were keeping a yacht. So be sure and tune in tomorrow to the Sears Radio Theater.